G'day, I'm B Agent Dad and how are you doing? Hope you're doing very well and keeping healthy and safe. Today we're going to look at this Dell Latitude 5421. It's a 14 inch business class laptop and it shares the same chassis as well as the options and configuration as the Dell Latitude 5420. So I'll actually refer you to that video for most of the features like the keyboard, the speakers as well as the screen options to the Latitude 5420, which I have the review video. So I'll put a link in the description below. You'll see a little flag up there so you can follow that. So what is the difference between the Dell Latitude 5420 and the Dell Latitude 5421 like this one here? It's actually the processor. This one has the Tiger Lake H processor or Intel Core H processor so it is the performance processor. I've got a bit of mixed feelings after having a play with this laptop for quite a bit of a time and you'll slowly see this and my later in the video reasons for that. So we're going to look at the temperatures and fan noise of this computer as well as the performance of the computer and the quick differences. So let's go on with it. So with the configuration wise Again, it was all the same as the Dell Latitude 5420. The only difference again is the processor. So you only can get an i5 or the i7. It is the Tiger Lake H processor, so it does run a lot more power in wattage. And that means it actually requires a 90 watt power supply, which it comes with instead of the 65 watt power supply in the Dell Latitude 5420. And it still has the option for discrete graphics to be configured, which is the NVIDIA GeForce MX450. And of course, it still can be configured with a 1080p webcam, fantastic. And also with the display, with the new display, which is the full HT 400 nits display can be configured as well. The weight of the Dell Latitude 5421 is 1.54 kilos add in the 90 watt power adapter becomes a total weight of 1.91 kilos that you might be carrying around with you. There are still two speakers located on the bottom front of the notebook and it is again forward facing firing and when I test out the maximum volume of the speakers it managed to peak at 85.9 decibels so it's pretty loud which is kind of good so you shouldn't be struggling too much in a presentation when you're out doors. Now as for the sound quality of the speakers, it hasn't really changed from the Dell Latitude 5420 and it still has a nice bit nicely well balanced between the high mids and lows. The highs, it doesn't really distort when it's gone crazy loud and with the mids it's quite strong there and there's a little bit of bass there which is kind of nice. So overall as a business laptop speakers, it generally does a decent job. Maximum volume, audio quality, of the latitude 5421. The Latitude 5421 can be configured with a 64 watt hour battery and it is a four cell battery and it does support rapid charge which means you can charge the battery from zero to 80% in one hour's time and it takes just under two hours from zero to 100%. Now I did perform a directory light test on this computer and I tested my five different modes. So in best performance mode it managed to get one hour and in better performance again it got one hour and 10 minutes and in better battery life it managed to get four hours and 30 minutes and in battery saving mode it managed to get six hours and 40 minutes and in my media mode it managed to get nine hours and 10 minutes so the battery life on this with the performance chip hasn't taken such a hard hit which is good to see now as a disclaimer all my battery life tests, I do put a consistent workload across all the system resources. So most applications don't hit the system resources as hard as I would. So you should actually get better battery life compared to the numbers I'm giving you. I'm just giving you the worst case scenario. 
As for the temperatures and fan noise of Latitude 5421, it hasn't really changed since the Latitude 5420. Again, it's very similar. When I put this computer on load, most of the heat is concentrated near the top center of the keyboard, which is again unsurprising because that's where the processor lives. When I tested out the temperatures and fan noise, my ambient temperature in the room was 20 degrees Celsius. And as for the ambient noise, was 37 decibels. Now, just as a help guide for you, your average hand temperature is around anywhere between 33 to about 34 degrees Celsius. So just keep that in mind so you can have an idea of how hot this computer can get. So I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest air of the keyboard measured in at 28 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it stayed at 37 decibel. Then I put the computer on 20% load, so that's pretty much like average use. So tasks like office productivity, surfing the web, streaming video, and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 35 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, stayed at 37 decibels, so it's still practically quiet. Then I put the computer on 50% load, and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 34 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it spun up to 41 decibels. And then I put the computer on 100% load and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 43 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, went all the way up to 44 decibels. I also measure the bottom back cover of the computer and the hottest area measured in at 39 degrees Celsius. And again, fan noise stayed at 44 decibels. So as you can see, I really still wouldn't put this computer on your lap. You do feel a, quite a bit of a heat still, but it's not extremely raging hot. But still, I don't really recommend most laptops to be on your lap, just because they do warm up in a way. Now, having a look at the temperatures, it hasn't really changed too much compared to the Dell Latitude 5420, which is good to see, and you see the performance bump up. Looking at stability and performance of the processor, now this particular unit is configured with an i5 11500H processor, and looking on the Intel website, we can see that the base clock speed is 2.9 GHz at 45 watts DDP, and it can slow it all the way down to about 2.4 GHz at 35 watts DDP when it needs to actually cool down or needs to try and save power. And I've got this computer running on 100% load for over two and a half hours. So that's the processor RAM and hard drive at 100% load. And I've got the thermal management set to ultra performance. And I've got this computer connected to mains power with the best performance power scheme as well. And we can see that the speed of the processor is ranging anywhere between about 3.7 to about 4.2 gigahertz and it pretty much just fluctuates between that all the way through now that's sitting pretty high up considering that the maximum total boost for this i5 is at 4.6 gigahertz i'm pretty impressed by this new i5 Tiger Lake H processor it's doing pretty well considering that's getting very close to maximum total boost and it's sustaining it quite high after this long periods of time of workload pretty nice i love to see what your thoughts are on that and now we have a look at the processor behavior to see how long it's able to maintain a high total boost for so i've got this computer still connected to mains power and it's still set to best performance on the power scheme and it is set to ultra performance in the thermal management now i'm going to put this computer on 100 percent load now and i'll then also start the stopwatch and we'll just see the speed of the processor here so we can see it goes all the way to about 4.2 gigahertz and knowing from the previous stability performance so it is sitting at 4.2 gigahertz and it's pretty much stable at 4.2 gigahertz at the moment and hasn't really moved between 4.2 gigahertz and we'll just have a look at the internal temperature of the processor and it was sitting about 33 degrees celsius and it's just slowly just climbing up there now and we're still sitting at 4.2 gigahertz at 30 seconds and now our internal temperature of the process is about 80 degrees celsius and now we go we just first saw the first fluctuation to around about 4 gigahertz and around about 45 seconds and now we're just hitting about 4 gigahertz and knowing from my stability performance tests, it's pretty much going to stay like this all the way through after a minute. So we can just tell you after a minute, 
that's kind of what you're looking at for this i5. We're looking at 4.2 gigahertz to about 45 seconds, and then it will just sit at its stability performance of 3. Point, pretty much 4 gigahertz, I will say, on average. I did perform the benchmarks for this Dell Latitude 5421. Now this one's configured with an i5 11500H processor with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig hard drive. So I put up the scores for PassMark, CityBench R23, PCMark, 3 Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, MATLAB 2020B, Geekbench 5, Pugin Photoshop, Pugin Premiere Pro, Pugin After Effects, Blender, and Spec View Pref. Also put up some gaming benchmarks like Eugene Engine, Assassin Creed Valhalla, Far Cry New Dawn, and Immortal Phoenix Rising. Comparing the results of the Dell Latitude 5421 with the Dell Latitude 5420, you can see that the processor scores and the processor speed is a lot quicker compared to the Intel Core Latitude 5420. And it is anywhere between 70 to 90% quicker, which is absolutely brilliant to see if you're using the processor cores for calculations. But what's really interesting to see is the 3D scores and the graphic scores of the Latitude 5421. Now this is more to deal with the chipsets itself. The Intel Core H processor or the Tiglet H processor still runs the Intel UHD graphics. Intel has not upgraded it to like the other 11th gen Intel Core that actually runs the Intel Iris Xe, which is quite a big boost in graphics performance. So this is actually running the old graphics UHD graphics, which is a bit of a bizarre thing, but, and you see that in all the results. So it could have scored a lot more better in a lot of results, but it did not because if an application runs or requires graphics, uh, you see in the spec view preference, which is a lot of the uh, professional softwares, that it was actually lacking behind the Latitude 5420, which had the new graphics, which is the Iris XC. So it did a lot better in those there. But if you're doing calculations and you didn't require the graphics side of things, this Intel Core H processor is brilliant. It is a massive increase in performance. So if you're not really running any really hard graphics and if you do run pretty hard graphics i probably would advise to actually configure the dell latitude 5421 with the discrete graphics of the nvidia geforce mx450 and that would fix all the problems of the latitude 5421 your serial scores would be massively increased uh, to the point where it would probably be twice as fast as the dell latitude 5420 but that's my only graph of that was that they used the last year's or previous year's model of the Intel graphics. I like to see them upgrade that because that would have fixed all the issues. But I can see it could maybe, maybe have issues with the heat. But else, this is still a fantastic laptop and I could probably advise people to still get this laptop because I still believe it is a faster laptop than the Dell Latitude 5420. So if you've got the money for it, go for this compared to the Latitude 5420. Hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. And if you did, even to support my channel, smack that like button for me. It does help me out. And if you haven't done already, subscribe my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And I do have a membership as well too. So you can click, let's just click on that join button. It's right next to the subscribe button as well. And I'm going to try and be more active on the member section uh, as next year come. And again, as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.